Probiotics. Boy, that's a hot topic these days. Consumers are reaching for foods and supplements that provide live bacteria touted to have health benefits ranging from improving gut health and boosting immunity to reducing weight and slowing aging. The actual evidence for such benefits is rather underwhelming, but there's no question that the trillions of bacteria that inhabit our body, collectively referred to as our microbiome, do affect biochemical processes and consequently do play a role in the state of our health. The problem is that we don't really know which of the hundreds of species of bacteria that constitute the microbiome are really beneficial, nor do we have a good enough grasp on how to introduce them into the body so that they end up as live organisms in the gut. Bacteria do not only frolic in our digestive tract, they also cavort on our skin. And it seems that one species, Lactobacillus crispatus, is capable of synthesizing collagen, the structural protein that determines the skin's firmness, smoothness, and elasticity. This is by no means the major way that collagen is synthesized. That job is performed by cells called fibroblasts in the dermis, the layer that lies just below the epidermis, which is the outermost layer of the skin. With age, the production of collagen by fibroblasts declines, the skin roughens, and wrinkles set in. If lactobacillus crispatus can be formulated into a cream that when applied to the skin can be shown to boost collagen production, an anti-aging, financially lucrative product could be in sight. That is just what researchers at BASF, the largest chemical company in the world, thought. Known mostly for producing chemicals needed for paints, plastics, insecticides, pharmaceuticals, and textiles in some 80 countries around the world, the company is now dipping its toes into the cosmetics market. The stimulus was the theory that lactobacillus crispatus is abundant on the skin until it begins to disappear around age 50. BASF scientists were able to isolate this bacterium from human skin, culture it, and develop a cream containing a dormant form of lactobacillus crispatus that comes awake on contact with water on the skin. Photomicrographs of the skin confirmed that there was indeed an increase in collagen formation. Next came a two-month trial with 30 women aged 45 to 65, applying a cream that when put on the face yielded a 0.25% concentration of live bacteria. The cream, named uh, ProBioLift, was set to show up to a 10% improvement in skin elasticity and a 7% decrease in crow's feet and pigmented age spots. Not exactly a breathtaking result and not likely to be noted by an observer, but it is a proof of concept with perhaps more effective creams to come. A major problem is to ensure that live bacteria are delivered to the skin in sufficient numbers. It will be a while, if ever, until ProBioLift makes it to market. But if hyped with terms like natural, preservative-free, vegan, clinically tested, and probiotic, it is likely to sell well, even with minimal efficacy. That for today is our Kappa Joe.